Hi there, my name is Sarah. And my name is Lizzie. And today we will be showing you polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis using the mini protein tetra system by BioRad, as we do it here at the Wilds Lab at Concordia University. Polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, or PAGE, is a molecular technique that separates macromolecules such as proteins and nucleic acids based on their size by applying an electric field. Mini gels are a great option when the size of the gel is not of great importance for your experiment. In our lab, we most frequently use mini gels to verify the size and purity of our oligonucleotide samples. Less material is needed to cast the mini gel, requiring only one eighth of the volume of page solution that is used for larger gels. This makes using a mini gel a much greener approach and also simply saves material. Also, it is significantly faster to run a mini gel compared to a large one, taking between less than an hour to around an hour and a half, compared to about two and a half hours for larger gels. Finally, the mini gels are easier to assemble. There are less parts involved in casting and running the gel, and you do not need to worry about buffer leaking from the top reservoir as you do with larger gels. To cast the gel, Start by cleaning the short plate, spacer plate, and comb with ethanol. Next, assemble the plates together, place them in the casting frame, and clamp them in place, assuring that everything is flush to prevent leaks. Place a gasket on the casting stand, and clamp the casting frame into the casting stand. To create the polyacrylamide gel, add 20 microliters of 20% ammonium persulfate and 10 microliters of TMED, to five milliliters of the desired page solution, mixing well in between. Without delay, add the solution to the space between the plates using a disposable plastic pipette. Finally, insert the comb at the top. Remove any overflow gel solution using the pipette or by wiping with a Kim wipe. While waiting for the gel to polymerize, you can prepare your oligonucleotide samples. 0.1 ODs are ideal for a small gel. Add 10 microliters of formamide to the dry samples and mix by vortexing. After about 20 to 30 minutes, your gel should have polymerized. Gently remove the comb from the wells and remove the plates from the casting stand and casting frame. Once released from the apparatus, you should rinse the wells with water, followed by rinsing the wells with the same buffer that you'll be using for gel electrophoresis. For us, we use 1 times TBE buffer. You will then need to place your gel in the electrode assembly with the short plate facing the inside along with a second gel or a buffer dam if you are only running one gel. Place the electrode assembly in the buffer tank and fill the buffer tank with recycled 1 times TB buffer up to the line labeled 2 gels. And lastly, gently fill the space between the plates with a fresh 1 times TB buffer. Next, using a micropipette with gel loading tips, you should carefully load 5 microliters of dye containing bromophenol blue and xylene cyanol FF. All samples should undergo one last vortexing and centrifugation step before loading. And when ready to load, you should feel the pipette tip between the two gel plates to ensure you are in fact loading into the well and not the space between the buffer dam and gel plates. Now you are ready to turn on the power supply to apply an electric field. Place the lid on the buffer tank, ensuring that the black and red electrodes are aligned appropriately. You can now turn on the electrophoresis power supply. Set it to 200 volts and press run. Although dependent on your samples, we typically run the gel until the dye band is about three quarters of the way through the gel because our oligos vary from five to 30 nucleotides. To visualize the gel, remove the electrode assembly from the buffer tank and take out the plates holding your gel. The used buffer can be conserved and reused to fill the bottom of the buffer tank for other gels. Use the gel releaser to pry apart the two plates and then gently transfer the gel onto a square of cardboard covered in a fresh layer of saran wrap. Be patient when trying to transfer the gel onto the cardboard as the gel often adheres to the gel plate and easily tears when too much force is applied. Finally, you can visualize the gel by placing it in the dark under short wave UV light. And that wraps up the video for how to set up and perform polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. Thank you for watching and best of luck on all your future gels!